Hey everyone, I'm Brian and I'm excited to show you Polyhedron, our new virtual tabletop. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the main features that make us different from other virtual tabletops. Uh, our two heroes here are on a quest. They're sailing across the sea to uh, attack a pirate fortress and defeat the villain. Uh, you'll notice right away that these maps are 3D. Uh, we can go up to the top of the ship, the crow's nest, and we can go down even below decks and look at all levels of the ship. Uh, and you'll notice here that when lower levels are visible, they're blurred out uh, to indicate that they're not on the map. Uh, and I can move tokens between levels using just uh, two clicks. So it's pretty easy to do. Uh, now things won't be so easy for our heroes. Uh, they're being pursued by this pirate ship, uh, trying to make sure they, they don't reach the pirate lair. Um, and, you know, a combat can start here. Uh, these pirates can, can shoot some arrows uh, at the heroes. Maybe this guy casts Misty Step, comes over here and starts fighting them on board their own ship, you know, something like that. But after a round or two of that sort of thing, the pirate ship is going to be closer. Uh, so does that mean we have to load up a brand new scene? Does that mean we have to move the terrain and then painstakingly move each figure? No, you'll see the entire ship drags easily uh, and the terrain snaps to grid just as easily as the individual um, characters do. Um, <clears throat> another unique feature of Polyhedron is that the scenes are infinite in size by default. Um, that means you can zoom in and look at the tiniest details of the tokens, and you can zoom way out and see the entire world at large. Um, <clears throat> that reduces the need to break immersion and move the players between scenes, because you can include a ton of content in just one scene. Uh, you can have the players battle an armada of ships. You could give each ship a different deck plan. Each ship um, <clears throat> could have its own monsters, its own treasure. And of course, you could uh, move the ships independently as you know the players battle this big armada and try to uh, outmaneuver their enemies. You could do a big strategic scale conflict all on the same map. Uh, you could include um, <clears throat> a chain of islands and give each island, uh, you know, a multi multi level dungeon. Uh, so there's a ton of content you can include in just one scene, and it's really easy to um, drop. Uh, a brand new um, piece of terrain into the map. Like, for example, this island for it. I can just add these islands to the map. Each one includes all the different layers. You can really see the value of 3D maps when you run battles on maps like these, ships, uh, fortresses, outdoor areas with multiple levels. Um, this sort of thing is very difficult to do on a traditional virtual tabletop. Um, for example, this this character is up here in the ramparts fighting these pirates, fighting this ogre, and she sees that her companion down here is, um, you know, he's losing this fight. This pirate's about to kill him. She wants to leap to the rescue. Uh, she can do that. She can hop down here and join this fight. Um, but if each level was on a separate scene or they were side by side on separate scenes, it'd be very difficult for the players to really understand what's going on, what are the relations between these different levels, where are all the characters in relation to one another. Um, so Polyhedron in that respect makes it really easy. I'd like to recognize here the artists that have made the maps that we're using. Uh, this really neat uh, 3D island fortress was made by Neutral Party, a map maker on Patreon. And these nice three ships were made by Two Minute Tabletop, uh, a map maker at twominutetabletop.com. Uh, we'll have the links to those in the description below. Um, but you're probably thinking, well, there's not a lot of 3D maps out there. Um, it's got to be really hard to import, you know, just regular battle maps from like my regular adventures into this system. Uh, well, next I'm going to show you just how easy it is to import assets, make everything 3D, uh, just how seamless the whole process is. Let's say I'm running the module Tomb of Annihilation. If I've already purchased it on D&D Beyond, I certainly don't want to buy it again just to play it online. So it should be really easy to import content into Polyhedron. Uh, let's find 
a map here with multiple layers and download it. I'm going to look at this Merchant Prince's Villa here, open up the player version. It'd be very difficult to run a battle on a map like this in Roll20 or a traditional virtual tabletop uh, because you'll see here there's this central um, central room of the villa has this has this large balcony and you know once you incorporate dynamic lighting and line of sight these two sections are going to be isolated from one another so if you have a battle where some characters are on top of the balcony, some characters are below the balcony. They should be able to see each other, but their tokens are going to be completely isolated from one one another on the battle map. So the DM, you know, is going to have to describe in exact detail which square each person is in, and it's all very cumbersome. So uh, this is a great candidate for a map to use in Polyhedron. I'm going to get the full resolution uh, version of this image, and I'm going to download it. Uh, then I'm going to come here to Polyhedron, and I'm going to upload it here to our uh, image importer. Even though there are two floors on this map, I can upload it just once, uh, because I can use this image cropper here to crop out the sections independently. The first thing I need to do is apply transparency to this upper level of the map. Uh, this is something you could do in Photoshop, you could do it in GIMP, you could do it in a similar tool, but uh, those are pretty technical tools. If you're not familiar with how to use them, it can be a lot of work. Plus, if you're importing a lot of different maps, you want it to be really easy. So we've incorporated those cleaning features into Polyhedron. The first step to cleaning this is to delete all the text, which is pretty easy to do. I can just select and delete. Um, the next thing to do is to use the magic wand tool to select these regions and delete them one by one. The central part is a little bit trickier uh, because there's no well-defined boundary for these steps, but I can get a little creative here and I can just use the rectangle select here to make a border. And then go back to the magic wand tool and select the rest of the courtyard area. And there we go. And then I can save this uh, image, and now I've got the transparency applied to the upper floor of my villa. The next step is to align these map images to the grid. If you didn't use the crop tool, you imported an image which is just the raw map, and you happen to know the grid size, you can just enter it here. Uh, otherwise, you can use our regression tool to uh, automatically fit the grids uh, using just a little bit of human input. Um, so first it wants me to select an area, which is one grid square, so I'll select one. Um, then select any number of points where grid lines should intersect. And then it'll do a best fit. So you can see here that this one's a little bit off. Just one click, click there at any spot where it looks like it's misaligned. And uh, yeah, with just two clicks, the whole thing looks pretty well aligned. So I'll save it. Now I'll do the next one. Great, piece of cake. So I'll upload my two images and assemble them. Next, I'll come to the terrain assembler and I will add each individual piece. First, I'll put down the first floor. 
uh, move up to the second level, and put down the second floor. They're easy to align because the grid data has been saved already. I'll just give it a name Villa and upload it. I know this assembly tool looks a little rough now. Uh, this is a very early version of the tool. We're currently um, integrating it better with the, the rest of our tools. Uh, so this is just a, a temporary version. Uh, it should look much more polished in the final release. Back on the scene page, we can uh, find our new terrain here on the terrain tab. We can add it to the map. Uh, and we can look and see both levels, and the transparency is working great. I'll turn on the grid here and turn on the snap to grid, and you'll see that the whole villa easily snaps to the grid. Um, I can add as many of these villas to the map as I want to create a whole neighborhood of them, um, and I can add I can add tokens as well to the map and they snap to the grid as well. Now let me show you how easy it is to add new tokens to Polyhedron just using images you find on the internet. I'll come here to the token page, I'll create a new token, and I will make this um, a gladiator. Uh, it'll be one of the guards in the villa. Uh, next I'll just uh, search Google for a suitable token. Type in Fantasy African Gladiator. And this one here looks perfect. Here it is in its full resolution. I'll download it. And I'll come back here to Polyhedron and upload it. And I can use a cropping tool to crop just the part of the image I want. And there it is. Back in the game scene, you can see it's easy to add these new tokens to the map. Um, and it's easy to crop them. You don't need any third party tools. Polyhedron is still in development, so please check out our Patreon if you want to support us. Uh, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the beta soon.